Let's look at a comprehensive example of process costing. It may be a little long-winded, but you'll understand the process by the time we're finished. We're going to set up the process, the um, process costing example here. Luxard Paint Company produces exterior latex paints, which it sells in one-gallon containers. The company has two processing departments, base fab and finishing. White paint, which is used as a base for all of the company's paints, is mixed from raw ingredients in the base fab department. Pigments are then added to the basic white paint. The pigmented paint is then squirted under pressure into one gallon containers, and the containers are labeled and packaged for shipping in the finishing department. So what we want to do is determine the cost of ending work in process inventories and we also want to cost the units transferred out of the base fab department in April. The following additional information is available regarding production in the base fab department in April. After we've determined the cost of ending work in process inventories as well as the units that were transferred out, we'll prepare a cost reconciliation report for April. This is the production data. I would caution you to print this out so you can use it as a reference tool as we go through the example. Here we have the number of units that were in the department at the beginning of the month of April. These were there, those, these are the units that were there in the month, at the beginning of the month. These are the units that were started into production during April. Then we have the units that were completed and transferred out of the finishing department. And then we have the units that are in process at the end of April. We have the following cost data. We have the cost of the materials. These were the ones that were in work in process at the beginning of April. So beginning work in process, materials, labor, and overhead. So it was a total cost of work in process at the beginning of the month. And then we have the cost of the materials for the cost that, for the units that were added during the, the month of April. There are four processing stages during a month. Beginning work in process units, units begun but not finished, units added during the month. Both of these comprise total units in the department during the month. At month end, these units either are completed and transferred to another department or they remain in the initial department and now they are ending work in process. Both of these totals should agree. So we have beginning work in process, we have those units that were added during the month, and that total, only one of two things can happen to those entire units that were available for production during the month. Either they've been transferred out or they remain in the department as ending work in process. So this total should agree to this total because this is the only thing that can happen to everything that was in the, in the department in the month of April. So our beginning work in process inventory was 30,000 units. We added 420,000 units. So the total units in the department for the month available for production were 450,000, of which 370,000 were transferred out. That means the remaining amount ending work in process has to be 80,000 because if you take 450,000, subtract out what was transferred out, the remainder would be um, ending work in process. And if we add these two together, then we have the total. And so this would agree because this ending, um, everything that was available for the month of April either wound up being transferred out or is an ending work in process. Find the missing information. If you know the total units in a department for the month and the units transferred out, can you determine the units in ending work in process? We'll work through that example. If you know the number of units in beginning work in process, the number of units added during the month, and the units in ending work in process, can you determine the units that were transferred? We'll work through that example. If you know the number of units transferred, units in ending work in process, and units added during the month, you can determine the number of, can you determine the number of units in beginning work in process? And again, we will work through these examples. So, we know the total units in a department for the month and the units transferred. Can you determine the units in ending work in process? So we know the total units that were in the department for the month, the total amount that were available. We know what was transferred out, so can we calculate the, in the units that are in ending work in process? Well, of course we can. 
We know that these two totals should agree because there's only one of two things that could happen to everything that was available during the month. A portion was transferred out. Therefore, this must be the portion that must remain in ending work in process. If you know the number of units in beginning work in process and the number of units added during the month, and during the month, can you determine the units transferred? Well, we have ending work in process, we know beginning work in process, and we know the amount added. Well, we know these two added together represent the total amount that was available in the department for the month. So these two totals should agree, showing that of this total ending work in process was 80,000, meaning the difference had to be transferred out. So these two totals should agree then we can calculate what was transferred out. If you know the number of units transferred, the units in ending work in process, and the units adding during the month, can you determine the number of units in beginning work in process? Well, we know what was transferred out in, in ending work in process, so that total of 450,000 should also agree to the total of what was in the department at the beginning of the month. So this was the total available, this is what was added, so the difference between the two would be beginning work in process. Now let's look at calculating equivalent units of production, a cost per equivalent per unit of production, costing out what was transferred out of the department, costing out what is an ending work in process, and doing a cost reconciliation report to determine that all costs have been accounted for. So let's do it step by step. To calculate the weighted equivalent units of production, we use transferred out units and ending work in process units. So those units that were transferred out, we will be looking at those, and we will be looking at the ending units in work in process. So when we're calculating the weighted average equivalent units of production, we will be using these two stages of production. So the units that were transferred out, 370,000, and those units are 100% complete with respect to direct materials because they were transferred out. 100% complete with respect to direct labor and 100% complete with respect to overhead. If they hadn't been complete, completed by 100%, then they would not have been transferred to the next department. Then we have the ending work in process units. Well, obviously, these are still not quite completed because they would have been transferred out. So the, a portion of them is incomplete. So we need to calculate and make these as though they're equivalent units of production because they're only partially completed. So we will multiply that by the percentage complete. So for direct materials, it was 50% complete. For direct labor, they were 25% complete and overhead 25% complete. So now we need to calculate equivalent of units of production by each individual type of um, item that is in the work in process for the month. Remember, work in process is direct materials, direct labor, and overhead. So we have different uh, units being completed at different rates, and then we'll also have different costs that will be associated with this. But first, let's look at calculating the equivalent units of production. This part of the, the um, page that we're using here, we're using it to accumulate the information in order to do the calculations here. So 100% of 370 for direct materials, 370. Same for direct labor, same for overhead. Now we will do the calculation of the different percentages complete for those units that are in ending work in process that are partially completed. So now we will add these together and then that will give us the calculation of weighted equivalent units of production. There will be a different one for direct materials and direct labor and overhead look as though they'll be the same but they could have been different. So weighted average equivalent units of production is 410,000 for direct materials, direct labor 390,000, overhead 390,000. Now we are going to calculate the cost of equivalent units of production. We use the cost from beginning work in process and those added during the month. This is different. Remember, we used ending work in process and units transferred out to calculate the weighted average equivalent units of production.
So now, because we don't have costs for equivalent unit of production, we're doing this calculation in order to value them and also to value out the units that were transferred. We have to use the costs that were in beginning work in process. And of course, we know from our accounting records the costs of those items that were added during the month. So this is our weighted average equivalent units of production from the prior page. Now, we'll look at the beginning work in process cost, $92,000 for direct materials, $21,000 for direct labor, $37,000 for overhead, the total of which is $150,000. And then we have cost added during the month for direct materials, direct labor, overhead, and then the total costs that were added during the month. This gives us our total cost of direct materials, total cost of direct labor, total cost of overhead, and a grand total. Now we will divide these by the equivalent units of production in order to derive a cost per equivalent unit. Equivalent units of production. So now $2.30 for direct materials, $0.90 cents for direct labor, and a hundred, I mean, I'm sorry, $1.80 for overhead. Now we will use the cost per equivalent unit to place a value or give a general ledger value to those units that were transferred out and those units that remain in an ending work in process. Now that we know what each unit costs to produce, we'll use this information to place a value on transferred units and ending work in process units which exist at month end in order to record these amounts in the general ledger. So now we have the cost of per, per equivalent unit from the prior page. And so now we are going to look at the units that were transferred out. So these are transferred out equivalent units of production. 370, 370, 370. Because remember, these were 100% complete. Now we're going to multiply them by the cost per equivalent unit. This is the total. And so we can see the totals for each one of these. So now we have a general ledger value, a total general ledger value associated with the cost transferred out. This will be used in a journal entry. Now let's do the same for what was an ending work in process. And now remember, these will be different. There will be a portion of the ending units. And so this is what we had prior to this. These were the equivalent units in ending work in process for direct materials, direct labor, and overhead. We're going to multiply it by the same cost per equivalent unit, the product of which we can see here. And then we're going to add them in total. And we will see that represents the total cost to be accounted for. So looking at this in total, we can see that the total beginning work in process and cost added to, for the month totaled a million nine hundred and ninety six thousand and then what was transferred out because remember these are everything that was in the department for the month well those costs either had to be transferred out or they had to still wind up in ending work in process so the cost to be accounted for should agree to the total cost accounted for and then this is the entire calculation pulled together in one spot for you to look at and see everything that we did in one place.